Hello and good morning, Dr. Jeff. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. Man, I got to thank you. I, I, I love what you do with, with not only uh, in, in your private practice, but the way that you're sharing the love of all animals on, on, on Animal Planet. Because, I mean, you, you just really are opening up your heart and you're teaching people. Uh, you know, it's, I think more than anything, that's what doctors should be, is educators, correct? I, absolutely. And storytellers in the way of, we, we forget that these, these animals and stuff like that, even the deer in this forest, I, I don't know the history of 100 years ago. They belong in this forest, and I want to know it. Yeah, I'm with you. To get where you are on Animal Planet, I mean, you are the mountain vet. I mean, you, you've, you see a lot out there in Denver. I mean, I, I'm from Montana. I know what you've got on those mountains, sir. <laughs> I came down from Montana, believe it or not, to go to vet school. Really? What what part of Montana are you but, from? Yeah. Well, um, well, my dad was in the service, so we were in Great Falls, but I went to grad school at uh, in Bozeman. Mm, are you a Great Falls bison? I mean, you know, because that rivalry between Billings and, and Great Falls, man, we, we had some problems with your football teams up there. <laughs> no, I was younger. I was, in, I was only in uh, elementary school when I was in, in Great Falls. Wow. Some of the stories that, you, that you're working on this time on Animal Planet's Dr. Jeffrey uh, Mountain Vet, Rocky Mountain Vet, um, is that you, you work with a Yorkie. A lot of people would walk away from this situation, and it breaks my heart when I see people like that. But you chose to walk the path of recovery. Yeah, I, I mean, I, in the end, it just uh, I worked animal control when I was in vet school, and it really opened my eyes to, to not necessarily poverty, but people that are on, I mean, we're on, it's America. Everybody's on a shoestring budget, you know, and most people don't have an extra $400 sitting around if they have a, you know, need to change tires on their car. And, and if a dog goes out and gets hit by a car or, or a cat gets into a fight, it can get real expensive real fast with, you know, current veterinary prices. Um, veterinary prices have shot up logarithmically over the last 20 years, and part of it is because so many um, uh, clinics have been bought out by, you know, basically Wall Street, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm all about making money, and, you know, it's okay to do that. But in the end, you have to pay when, you know, when you have boards of directors and stuff and a, and a tier system. Uh, so, you know, the, the kind of the James Harriet, you know, um, vet is kind of gone. Uh, there's not a lot of us left anymore that just kind of work with people on a grassroots basis and, and you know, they don't always have the money. So uh, I, I think I think we need more vets that do what I do, high volume, low cost work. And we certainly need the big humane societies to get involved in this kind of work because there's a real demand. Only about 40 percent of Americans can afford curtain veterinary uh, work simply because we we switch human medicine over to animal medicine. And it's great for the animals if you can afford it, and that becomes the real key. You are so right about that because I, I do go to CVS to pick up my dog's medicine, and, 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 because, and I'm using human medicine for that to, to cure her, her anxiety. And, and it's, you know, it's, just, it's, it's amazing what, what – and here's – because I, I think that your heart is big enough in the way that I think you would have stopped me with a dog that I had several years ago. I spent $8,000 on, on a dog who swallowed a penny who got zinc poisoning. My dog was very sick, and I kept saying, let's try something new, let's try something new. You would be that guy that would say okay okay we're going to try something new let's go adopt another dog <laughs> well yes and no i mean i i, I put in the time you know we do yeah. pretty amazing ex exploratories and chest surgeries and you know i mean so i'm willing to give it you know i just don't i can't practice the same level i mean we're not going to be doing ct scans and you know uh, computer generated models before doing the surgeries and things like that i mean the things that are available to to uh, surgeons and at universities right now and uh, are, are it's, it's amazing i mean it's it's fantastic but once again someone has to pay for yeah, it you know yeah. and, that, and that gets you the thing so, oh i put it on care credit oh but, my god i i thank god for those yeah. guys yeah, but you know, you take a single mom with two kids. Right. How can she do that? You know, it's right. it, you know, and I, my big thing right now, economic euthanasia. That's it's a reality, and you know, my purpose here is to fill that gap so people don't have that choice of okay, I got to spend eight or ten thousand dollars, or I have to kill my dog, you know, or kill my cat. I want to fill that gap, and maybe I, I'm only going to charge them a thousand or fifteen hundred, but I'm going to try to do my best and do everything I can to get that dog back to them. <laughs> What was your gut reaction and feeling as a professional in, when, when the story broke last week about the people here in North Carolina who got rid of their dog because they said it was gay? And, and, it's, and so it's like, what in God's name is going on with the way that we love our animals? Yeah. yeah. 
Well, I, I decided a long time ago Americans are schizophrenic when it comes to animals, and there's no rhyme or reason. I, I got my last dog simply because um, that it, it ate a sock, and that people <laughs> they prayed, and they decided God told them to kill it, and versus take the sock out. Oh my you know? God! And I. I I still think a lot of this comes back to money issues. Uh, the gay, I don't know, you know, that makes no sense to me, but dogs will hump other dogs, guess what, boys and boy, girls and girls, and, and so every animal on the planet does that. Every mammal's known to have those kind of tendencies, so, you know, it's not that abnormal. Well, on Animal Planet's Dr. Jeff, Rocky Mountain Vet, you also go out and you help out the wolves as well. The wolves are my are my totem animal. I love the idea. Now, my question is, is what the problem that you face, was it because of too much inbreeding, because they have, they, they pack up, and, and it can be for life. Yeah, most of the wolves we see there in the in the sanctuaries are not purebred, you know, and most of them have been raised individually or in small groups. Um, so, and they've been given up simply yeah. because they're really bad pets. You know, do not go get a wolf hybrid. They're cool as all get out, but they are not easy to handle. The average uh, owner, uh, dog owner, should not even consider a wolf hybrid. And so, you know, we deal with a lot of uh, wolf sanctuaries out here in Colorado. Yep. So, do you, do you read books like from Ted Andrews and stuff like that with Animal Speak because as close as you get to those animals, you've got to be listening to their voice. Well, I, my, my, I think my totem animal is the wolf, according to all of my, ah. my Native American friends. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I give them healthy respect, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, now, when, when you get inside, for instance, like the geese, we have a lot of geese here in the South, Canadian geese in the South, which, which sounds like a, a joke. Yeah. But, but, I mean, you worked with one that actually got a, a hook in its, in its, in its neck? What, what happened here? Yeah. Yeah, we see that pretty commonly. I, you know, people cut their fishing line, it gets yeah. tangled up in, and especially in the little mountain um, communities where they have these little lakes where a lot of everybody's down there fishing and, and stuff. And, and, and inv- invariably, you end up, they end up in the wings, in the mouth, mm. uh, around the legs. Um, I mean, we get calls and see this all the time. So it's, it's a pretty common thing for, and especially for some reason, Canadian geese. One of the things that I'm really worried about is are the animals in Ukraine. I mean, we, you know, if we're going to move people, we should also be moving animals, and we can, we can rescue animals. Is there such a thing where we can be reaching out to save those animals? Yeah, I'm, I'm in contact with a few of my friends. I've lectured in, in Kiev um, and, and taught Spaniard there, and, um, and, and there's no question that, that the Ukrainian people are very much in their animals. They really are into their animals. Uh, and a lot of them are going to try to move with their animals. And it, it's the same thing we saw with Katrina and other things here in America, though, too. It's like it, during times of real crises, like the government agencies are like, well, you can't bring your animals. Uh, you know, they, like for a lot of people, especially elderly people, you know, that's like asking them to leave their kids behind, you know. And I don't – we got to be more open and, and more, you know, think more uh, – more liberal about that kind of thing because we need to provide provide those opportunities for people to leave with their animals and and or be able to help take their animals from a given situation. Well, I can't thank you enough for what you do. Like I said in the very beginning, you you are educating people about about loving their animals, taking care of their animals. Plus, you're opening up their hearts to find ways to help heal their 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 family, friends, and family members. Well, I really appreciate you having me on. Well, come back anytime, Doctor. The door's always going to be open for you. I like talking animals. <laughs> Sounds good. I love it too. Okay, you be brilliant today, sir. Thank you very much.